Welcome back to How to Cake It, everyone. It's time to fall for cake. It's fall where I live here in Canada. It's getting cooler, really pretty outside. So I'm gonna make a fall harvest cake, the perfect cake to lead us into hibernation and to celebrate our Canadian Thanksgiving, which is in October. I'm gonna make a luscious carrot cake with cinnamon buttercream, sauteed apples and sauteed plums and homemade caramel infused with maple syrup. I think this will get me into the fall Canadian Thanksgiving mood. You know that I am a professional method baker. I'm, I'm gonna get in the zone right now. If you want the full breakdown of ingredients, tools, and step-by-step -step instructions on how to make this cake, just head to my blog at howtocakeit.com or click the link in the description below. Okay, let's make homemade caramel. So begin by pouring your sugar into a really good stainless steel pot and then pour on your water. Now we're gonna get this on the heat, really hot. We want our sugar and water to come to a complete boil in the pot because once it starts to boil, it will actually start to turn amber and begin to brown. And that's what caramel is essentially. But it is gonna take a few minutes and in the meanwhile, we should prepare our whipping cream. Because sugar boils at such a high temperature, if you pour in your cream ice cold from the fridge, it will really bubble up and there's a chance you could burn yourself. And we don't want that to happen. So what you should do is heat your cream in the microwave and bring it to a boil. It's a half a cup of cream and I heat it for about a minute. I can hear my sugar mixture bubbling and it sure is. Now if you see some crystallization happening at the edges of your pot, just have a little bit of cold water and a brush and brush down the sides of your pot, wetting that crystallized sugar. Watch your hands, be very careful. This is extremely hot. Okay, so I'm starting to see the sugar amber a little in the middle here. And once you see that, start to stir it around your pot. The reason why I stir the amber is so that it caramelizes evenly. You wanna deepen the amber, but you don't wanna burn it. You're gonna keep your heat on high the whole time. And when it gets to a nice color, almost like this, maple syrup, we're gonna remove it from the heat. My caramel is nice and brown perfectly, so we're gonna quickly remove it from the heat, pour in your whipping cream with a glove on your hand, and stir it right in. Now pour your boiling hot caramel into your cold butter through a sieve right onto your butter. Just push your caramel through your sieve. Just stir your caramel until it all comes together. Oh, look at it. This is one of my favorite things to make. Now, for this fall harvest cake, I am gonna add maple syrup to my caramel. Stir in your maple syrup, and I didn't add too much because I didn't want it to thin the caramel too much. I actually added extra butter to this caramel so that it would be thicker, so that when I added my maple syrup, which would make it thinner, it would even it out. Now put your caramel aside. It has to be completely cool before we use it on our cake later. Yep, I'm still wearing a turkey hat. Time to saute apples and plums. Guess I know you haven't seen cake yet. There is cake coming, but we have to do this first. We're gonna begin by peeling our apples. I chose Granny Smith because I love the sharpness of Granny Smith apple. This is a slicer and corer. And now you're going to use it to core and slice your apples. If you don't have one, you can use a regular corer or just use a knife. Holy mackerel! Holy apples! Ah! I need a workout regimen other than icing cakes. Now what we're gonna do is slice these in half, make them thinner, so two thinner wedges from one. Cut off any extra skin if you see it left behind. Now we're gonna move on to our plums. Unfortunately, they don't make a plum corer, so we are gonna slice them open, pit them, and cut them in wedges. 
We could do the plum wedges a little bigger, so we're only going to cut each plum into eight wedges. And now all of our plums have been cut into wedges as well, and we can start to saute. You need some unsalted butter, you need a saute pan on medium high heat, and you also need a couple of baking trays on the side, either lined with a nonstick mat or parchment paper, so that as our apples are cooked, we could pick them off and put them on the tray and start to cook our next set. So let's get some butter in our pan. Let it melt. When your butter is melted and nice and hot, start to add some apple slices to your pan. You only wanna add one layer at a time. You don't want them to be piled on top of each other. We don't wanna get these apples really soggy. We wanna cook them so that they soften, but we definitely don't wanna lose the shape of the wedge. I think the apples are ready to turn. I'm just gonna turn one over and have a look. Yeah, you see a little bit of browning, which is really nice. Our first batch of apples is looking great. I'm gonna take them out onto my baking tray and move on to the next set. We've sauteed all our Granny Smith apples. We're gonna move on to our plums. Same procedure. Chet, can you see the plums nice and clearly? Oh yeah, I can see them nice and clear. They don't need a close-up of this hat. Okay. They need to see plums right. right. sautéing. Be gentle with your plums. They're more delicate than apples are. These plums are done. I'm gonna remove them carefully, one at a time. All of our plums and apples have been beautifully sauteed. We're gonna put these aside to cool completely and in the meanwhile, you guessed it, we're gonna move on to cake. Guys, guess what? I baked a cake. I baked a super moist carrot cake. This is one of my favorites. I've made a full video tutorial on how to make my favorite carrot cake recipe. Just click the link in the description below. For this fall harvest cake, you're gonna need three eight inch round pans. Once they're cool, remove them from your pan. I don't like to remove my cakes from their pan until they are completely cooled. I don't want them to settle and I think it's much easier. All I'm doing for this cake is removing the domes and the crust off the top of my three eight inch round carrot cakes. Now for the carrot cake that's gonna be placed as the middle layer, I also wanna remove the bottom crust of the cake. Now, carrot cake is so moist that I actually don't need simple syrup. You should know what this is by now. This is my favorite Italian meringue buttercream. You can make it yourself. There's a link in the description below. And today I'm gonna flavor it with Cinnamon, I only used fresh ground cinnamon from Grenada. In case you don't know, I'm half Grenadian, which is a small island in the Caribbean, and it's known as the Island of Spice. Because cinnamon is dry, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove some buttercream into a smaller bowl, flavor it with cinnamon, mix it up, and then pour it back into the whole batch because I don't want this to clump in this big batch of buttercream. Now I'm happy with my little bit of extreme cinnamon buttercream. <laughs> Time to add this back to the rest of the buttercream. And now mix it all up, fold it in. It's time for my favorite part. Mmm. It's spicy. Time to grab my carrot cake and my perfectly cooled caramel and fruit. Remember guys, if you want a list of all the tools I've used as well as all the recipes I've made to make this fall harvest cake today, I have made it simple for you. It's all on my blog at howtocakeit.com. There's a link in the description below. See it? It's down there. So what I'm gonna do is fill a piping bag with a bit of this cinnamon buttercream. Spread a little bit of cinnamon buttercream right onto your carrot cake. So spread a nice layer of cinnamon buttercream. Then take your piping bag and we're gonna make a cinnamon buttercream fence. Just pipe around the perimeter. This fence is gonna hold in mainly our caramel and it will sort of stop our apple wedges from poking out the sides so when we ice this cake, we don't have to keep shoving them back in. 
And what I like to do is sort of fan them in the cake. Basically, just pick up your apples and think of a clock and fan them within your fence, overlap a little bit. To fill in your little gap in the middle, just take two apple slices and overlap them. And now, something so beautiful is gonna happen. Oh girl, yeah baby, girl. I saw your caramel sauce and I thought, you were looking so fine, girl. <laughs> You're just gonna take this caramel with your wooden spoon and just drizzle it over your apples in a circular motion and try not to send any over the fence. I love the way you drizzle that caramel right over them apples. You know one layer is never enough for how to cake a cake. We've got to repeat this whole thing one more time. You could check if you're aligned by just using a straight spatula and smoothing out that buttercream. Let's spread another layer of cinnamon buttercream. Time to pipe another buttercream fence. And now back to our sauteed apples and fanning them around this second layer. The best thing about fanning your apples in your cake is it creates a lot of nooks and crannies for your caramel to fall into. Now we're gonna place our final carrot cake layer right on top, and then we're gonna crumb coat this beautiful fall harvest cake. So start by just smoothing out your fence, your buttercream fence. Now that this cake is nicely crumb coated, it's important to chill it in the fridge for 30 minutes to get this crumb coat nice and hard before we ice it one more time. My cake is cool, you can tell just by touching your buttercream and it doesn't come off on your fingers. And now we're ready to ice this cake. Just take some more of your cinnamon buttercream. I'm just using a straight spatula cake icing spatula. It's okay if this cake looks rustic and homemade. I think that's kind of a part of fall and Thanksgiving. So just put some buttercream all around. We don't want to see any carrot cake or apples poking through the sides. To smooth your top, what I like to do is just sort of pull in this excess to the center of the cake and wipe off your spatula every single time. I want this cake to have a bit of texture. So what I'm gonna do is use my spatula and just create lines within the buttercream. So take your spatula using the tip of it, hold it upright and just go back and forth within your buttercream in small sections. So you're creating almost buttercream waves. When you're happy with your texture, once again, just bring all your excess buttercream to the center of the top of your cake. This cake looks great already, so let's get it in our fridge for half an hour and get it nice and cold. High five. Oh, I missed. Oh, I gotta go downstairs. Okay, we're back. I'm gonna move my cake onto this beautiful stand. I'm gonna use an offset spatula. We wanna get it off this gold cake board. We're gonna lay our plums on top of the cake in the same fan pattern that we did with our apples inside the cake. I'm gonna just fill in this hole with my last little bit of cinnamon buttercream, just to give my plums a little bit of a stage. Time to drizzle more caramel. I want my caramel to be a little more runny than this, so I'm just gonna pop it in the microwave for 15 seconds. I love the way you microwave that caramel. <laughs> you know the other night when I called you and you were microwaving caramel? Although we heated our caramel a little, you definitely don't want it to be hot because you don't want it to start to melt the buttercream around the sides of your cake. It's not hot at all, but it is more runny. And now it's time for the drizzle. Now that's a fall harvest cake.
This is my favorite part of how to cake it. I'm not going to carve this turkey, but I am going to carve this cake. I don't know where to begin. I need some apple, I need some cinnamon buttercream, I need some caramel. This is the perfect fall harvest cake. It's like I'm walking through an orchard filled with cakes. Guys, I think I'm done. See you next time. I saw you drizzling that caramel over that fall harvest cake and I thought, I need to subscribe to How to Cake It. Yeah, that'll make my life better.